This is the second part of World War One, and if you haven't seen part one of it, check it out as I've linked it in the description box down below. Now, if you're a really keen person, you might have a question that, why is it a global war when there are only European powers fighting? Well, here's the answer, starting out with something really mind-boggling. There were more than 4 million non-British troops in the British Army. What a loot! Well, Britain was really powerful, as it reigned over India, made most of Africa its colony, had colonies in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and even Rhodesia, which is modern-day Zimbabwe. Now, this means the British Army had soldiers from five continents in the world, Africa, North America, Asia, Australia, and Europe. Wow, that's a lot of continents. Now, want to know how America got in? Well, you probably would. So there are really many reasons for this. The intentional sinking of the American cruise Lusitania by the German submarines killing about 124 American civilians. But that w wouldn't be such a solid reason for an interference in the dreaded war. But as the Germans knew that America was getting stronger and had trade going on with Britain, the Germans sent a let letter to Mexico trying to fix a deal with them by helping them get back California and in turn getting Mexico to help Germany attack America. It was a pretty good deal but the British were nosy for good. They intervened and told America about all of this and America joined. Though they only fought for 19 months, which does sound like a long time now, but just over a fourth of how long the whole war was. So with so much power and the new technology of the really cool tanks, the British had to win. But just to say, the tanks were literally human walking speed. I mean, even your grandma could walk faster than the tanks. Now let's talk about chemical warfare, which again Germany started. They let out harmful chlorine gas into the British and French trenches, so the British went for revenge, but gas never went good with them. Their first attack backfired because of the change in wind direction, which is such a horrible reason for more deaths. This kind of warfare led to a couple thousand deaths, which was not a lot compared to the other weapons, especially in the World War, where thousands were killed nearly every day. It mostly caused temporary or permanent blindness, skin abnormalities, and most of all, like the shell shock, mental trauma. Now in comes a little fun fact, or to say a rather stinky one. The soldiers were advised to wee on a handkerchief and cover their mouth and nose with it during a gas attack, which only provided a bit of protection. The war went on from 1914 to 1918, when on the 11th of November 1918 the Germans finally surrendered, and the war came to an end, and finally taught the future generations the atrocities of war and the brutality in it. And from then on, the world became a better place to live in. Until Hitler kicks in and says, Oh yes, I want war. So if you're really interested in World War I, you can check out the documentary, They Shall Not Grow Old, which is an amazing work of Peter Jackson, the director of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> So be sure to like, share, subscribe and don't forget to click on the notification bell for further updates. You can also let us know what you want to learn next in the comments down below.